So anyways, onward with the discussion. And thanks, Michaela, for agreeing to do this. Hey, guys. I'm coming on my dad's channel to interview him because he's dealing with some serious things right now, like usual, kind of like usual. So first off, how are you? How are you doing, Dad? Well, not too bad. Um, I've been preparing my public response to the decision of the Ontario College of Psychologists to require me to do mandatory social media communication retraining. Um, they've, they have, the College of Psychologists is the regulatory board for the practice of psychology in Ontario. There are a variety of regulated professions, medicine, dentistry, teaching, architecture, psychology, that's not all of them. And these regulated professions have a board that's appointed by the government whose mandate is to protect the public from unprofessional behavior on the part of the members of the regulated professions. And people can submit complaints to those bodies if they believe that they've been treated um, unprofessionally or unethically or otherwise inappropriately by a college member, so a member of the relevant profession. And uh, the college has been after me nonstop with complaints since I rose to public prominence in 2016, although not once before that in the 20 years that I practiced as a clinical psychologist. So this isn't the university that's after me like it was in 2016. 17, 2016. This is the College of Psychologists, which has started pursuing me in 2016 and has never let up. Now, what happens is that people, anyone anywhere can submit a complaint about me for anything I've done or said, hypothetical or otherwise, and then the college can, and that doesn't matter if they're a client of mine or ever have been, or if I've had any dealings with them, or even if they're the person who has hypothetically been harmed by my behavior. Mm. Um, and the college has decided to pursue a sequence of such complaints, even though it's in their power to dismiss them as vexatious or frivolous, which is what I asked for, on the grounds that my social media communication has caused harm to people. And so, They've essentially taken out what are the equivalent of more than a dozen lawsuits against me. And I say they're equivalent to lawsuits because the penalty for being found guilty of such misbehavior is quite serious. It can involve re-education, public apology, or even the removal of my ability to practice or to describe myself as a clinical psychologist. And of course, it took me about 10 years all things considered, to get licensed. It's a very difficult process, and I'm not inclined to give it up lightly. In any case, they have been after me to a tremendous degree in 2022. I think there's 13 or 14 complaints, each of which culminated in one of these lawsuits. I'm represented by legal counsel. There's so many of them that they're difficult to keep track of. Um, I probably went through 400 pages of documentation this week. And you asked me how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, first of all, I found it extremely difficult to keep my, my rage under control because a tremendous amount of my time is being wasted. It's extremely expensive. The allegations are not only utterly preposterous, but entirely political in nature. And then I was also afraid of it. You know, the first complaint came in 2017, 2016 in December, at the same time the university was after me and at the same time the Canadian Revenue Authorities were after me for a mistake they admitted making six months later. And you remember that was an extremely stressful time and I was accused at that point of inappropriate personal conduct in relationship to one of my clients. All of that was... Uh, dismissed, by the way, without hesitation, although the college did decide at that point because they needed to decide I was guilty of something, even though I wasn't guilty of what I was, of what I was most seriously accused of. 
They decided I hadn't handled my email properly at that point when I was getting thousands of emails a day. Yeah. Um, and that that made it difficult for my clients to get a hold of me, even though I had given every single one of my clients my personal phone number and could contact me by text, which is something, by the way, that psychologists never do, you know, for, for obvious reasons. So in any case, it's been a continuous stream of investigations and legal defense since then, um, I found that kind of accusation of serious personal misconduct unbelievably stressful in 2016. It certainly mm -hmm. contributed to be, me becoming ill. Yeah. And then I didn't really want to revisit it, you know, and so I started going through all that documentation last week so that I could lay out everything that's been levied at me. And... Uh, you know, I went through all that stuff from 2017, even talking about it now, it makes me shake to some degree. Um, afterwards, I could hardly stand up. I, like, just about fainted three or four times and, you know, had a real hard time keeping myself composed. It's very off-putting to, let's say, to have attempted to conduct myself extremely carefully in my professional occupations as a professor and as a clinical psychologist for decades, you know, to, to step very carefully. I, of course, I never had any behavioral accusations levied against me at Harvard or the University of Toronto or as a clinical psychologist in the 30 years I was a professor and 20 years of private practice. And then to be accused of serious personal misconduct, the essential claim was my seductive behavior as a therapist and the evidence uh, offered was that when I was offering my advice, I would spin my wedding ring, which was apparently some Freudian indication that I was, you know, sexually interested in the particular complaining client. Now, I don't particularly blame her. I mean, had she not had her problems, she wouldn't have come and seen me, you know. But the college has a tremendous gavel to wield, a tremendous hammer, and to have that brought down on you is... It's no joke, you know, and I've known a lot of people now who've been investigated for that sort of thing um, by mobs, let's say, of one form or another, and it's very, very hard on them. So when I revisited all this, it was really, and I'd probably been avoiding doing it to some degree, you know, although, you know, we had to wait until we moved forward with our legal challenge before we could make any of this public. There was still an element of avoidance, and no wonder, you know, it really lit me on fire again when I was going through this stuff. But one of the upsides was, you know, I reviewed the and organized the complaints that are levied against me now, the accusations for which I've already been sentenced, essentially. And uh, the upside of it was that, well, these accusations are so incredibly preposterous and political that it's almost incomprehensible. You know, I'm literally being... Well, the, the requirement is, so the college has decided after pursuing these complaints that I don't know how to regulate my behavior properly in my social media communications. And so I need to be taught by their experts how to conduct myself appropriately. And so I have to undergo a series of courses, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching sessions with their <laughs> deemed experts, and they're going to tell me, how I should craft my words and what I should say and what I shouldn't say. And I am required to pay for that. It's about $250 an hour, which, you know, in our current circumstances isn't a concern in and of itself, but you can understand that for many oh, people yeah. that would be tremendously burdensome. Um, and the person who's teaching me is going to submit regular reports to the college and they're going to decide when I've learned how to be the sort of person I should be so that I don't bring disgrace upon the profession and harm people. <laughs> and so the claims of harm are absolutely unwarranted. Not a single person who submitted a complaint in this latest round is a client of mine, although half of them falsely claimed to be. Oh, so they're stable and the people. And pursued their complaints anyways. Yeah. Well, I think some of it is they're probably confused about the what they're 